harvest time, the harvest of yesterday's planting. Tomorrow, the harvest of today's earnest efforts. Wherever men dream and plan and toil for themselves and others, the harvest must come. Throughout the world each day, there is somewhere a harvest time. When spring begins in Canada, the ripened grain is yellow on the Nile. When winter comes to the Argentine, Nebraska corn is standing in full flower. Throughout the world each day, there is somewhere a harvest time. And each day is the harvest of yesterday's planting. From small beginnings sometimes come abundant harvests. From a tiny workshop came the vision that built a million miles of highways. From this rude bench and lathe and drill have sprung the tools for 80,000 men. From this small shop has grown a city of work and opportunity, an industrial city covering a thousand acres, a city drawing visitors from all the world who come to wonder and to learn. Each year, more than a million visitors come to Dearborn, Michigan. They gather here at the Rotunda, a permanent guest house at the gateway to the Rouge. Here, before visiting the plant, are presented the latest tangible shapes into which the Ford idea has been molded. Built of welded steel and safety glass, powered by continuously refined V-type 8 and 12 cylinder engines, streamlined and graceful in appearance, here is presented the latest addition to the Ford and Lincoln line. A new car, a new name, a new value, the Mercury 8. These cars embody all the advanced performance, economy, and safety principles that have been learned by Ford engineers and production experts in more than 35 years of experience, constant research, and scientific pioneering. And so from all over the world and from over all America come visitors by the thousands daily. Some are everyday citizens as you and I. Some are industrialists, scientists, students, business leaders. Some are eminent engineers. Why does this one industrial city attract so many visitors? What have they to learn? What is there here that is unique in the entire automotive industry? What is there here that creates advantages for purchasers when automobile values are appraised and compared? What is there back of these products plain an exceptional standard of quality for the price? Well, the answers to these questions will be given to you because the answers are here at the Ford and Lincoln plants. For example, this is a city of transportation where carriers of materials and things lighten and lessen the task of building carriers of men and burdens. Where builders of transportation are the greatest users of transportation to bring materials and things to forge, to lathe, to bench, to the busy hands of men. For the city of transportation is a complete city, a city founded upon an idea, a different idea, a city whose every source and resource bring here the means, find here the methods, join here the opportunities to work, to tend, to spin, to weave, to form and transform, so that from within this city of transportation, great values in transportation are made available to the world. A most important item in the building of a quality product of the highest possible value is one that the visitor to the Rouge plant may never see. It's the thought and study, the painstaking research that develops better things and new things to produce greater values at less cost. 
here, before today's new products were built, months were spent in developing new alloy steels. Intricate apparatus was designed and erected to detect sounds and vibrations, to record them and locate the cause and source of noise in a traveling car and learn new ways to overcome it. New materials were developed to aid this accomplishment, sound deadening materials, so that today's new cars are quiet on the highways, inside and out. Thought and study in the same research efforts are bringing and ensuring continual advances in the precision manufacture of materials and parts, in the development of apparatus that will measure the dimensions of parts in ten thousandths of an inch and judge the smoothness of surface finishes in millionths of an inch, which has brought about the micro-mirror finishing of parts to retard wear and lengthen their span of life. In addition to mechanical and metallurgical research, Thought and study in the field of chemistry have for years been devoted to the development of new uses for farm products. Until today, the American farmer helps to build motor cars, just as the motor car manufacturer helps to make farming more efficient and convenient. They help each other, and that helps the country. For example, for every million cars produced, there is an annual purchase of 3,200,000 pounds of wool. 1,500,000 square feet of leather, beeswax from millions of honeybees for electric embedding compounds, 69 million pounds of cotton, 500,000 bushels of corn, 2,400,000 pounds of linseed oil, 2,500,000 gallons of molasses, 2 million pounds of turpentine, and 69 million pounds of rubber for the 203 rubber parts in the modern automobile. These, together with other purchases from more than 7,000 suppliers, total hundreds of millions of dollars, spreading work and wealth into every state of the Union. And this vast purchasing is an established policy here for a sound economic reason. Industry must buy from others if it is to sell to others, for industry is a process of give and take. It is cooperation among many forces and many interests. And because industry must buy and must create jobs and wages if it hopes to sell, village industries have been fostered and aided in their development so that in agricultural regions there will be useful work to do when harvests of the fields have been gathered. One of the most interesting of these harvests, because it shows the trend, is soybeans. For every million cars produced, 600,000 bushels are used annually for the manufacture of enamels and for plastics, electrical parts and similar parts. But while scientists and engineers are important to the development and perfection of new ideas, new things in transportation, it is equally important that motor cars have a style and beauty that do more than please the eye, an appearance that expresses swift transportation with comfort and safety. And it is here that today's designs were developed. It is here that tomorrow's designs are being planned. After principles are thoroughly tested, they are embodied in experimental models built in the laboratories. And the next step is the weather tunnel the only full-size weather tunnel in the United States, where the world's worst weather in all conceivable combinations is created to order. The findings in this weather laboratory, the first of its kind to be built expressly for scientific research into motor design and operation, are checked with actual road conditions on one of the world's largest test tracks, where today's cars, while still in the experimental stage, were driven thousands of miles at high speed, where they were tested on brick paving, checked for safety on wet asphalt, pounded over cobblestones to prove stamina, and over rough, uneven roads to make certain that all factors contributing to comfort have been improved. Here, too, the cars are checked and double-checked with sound recording, 
and proved in action to be quiet beyond all comparison. They are checked for safety, for durability, for economy, for comfort, to the end that new ideas, new things, new materials in today's Lincoln, Lincoln Zephyr, Mercury and Ford cars and trucks are thoroughly tested. For here, nothing is approved until it is proved. But what are some of the things that draw people here from all over America, from all over the world? Almost any large industrial operation is spectacular. But what is there here that differs advantageously, is unique, that explains an outstanding ability in this industry to offer more for less? Why does this plant produce its own electricity? Electrical power can be purchased. Why does this plant have huge blast furnaces to produce its own iron? Iron can be bought. Blast furnaces need coke, and coke too can be purchased. Why does the Rouge plant make its own coke? 